Welcome back to Australia, everybody. I just wanted to drive outside, so I had some good lighting and some nice nature for you to film a video about a new Infinity Jet that I designed. Uh, I'm also gonna give you a quick update on the electric gold dredge project. So let's go get set up somewhere and I'll show you what's going on. This is the update of my subsurface two inch electric gold dredge. I think it's coming along nicely, just a few more things to test and this will get its own video. But today, here's the Infinity Jet. So let's get you a little close up of what this thing is. And I even created a little pie cutout thing that we can, we can get right into the details of how this thing actually works. So what I have here is the Infinity Jet. And I printed this thing out where the, the wall thickness is designed to be printed as a 100% plastic thing. There's no infill. This thing is rock solid. This particular one happens to be printed out of ABS plastic. So think high impact ABS versus PVC. Very similar, very strong. Uh, your hose is most likely made out of PVC. So as far as the wear is concerned, I imagine this would wear out about the same as a dredge hose, which seems to be pretty good. Uh, untested though. So this is just something I did because I've always been interested in these infinity jets. This would be an oversized jet. So the inside, the inside diameter of this is the same as the inside diameter of your hose. And the hose actually slips inside of these like connections on the end. This is a ducting hose for air. It's a little light duty compared to most dredge hose. It's something I'm playing around with right now. And it's got a little jiggle. So what you would do is you just tape around there if it doesn't quite fit. Or if you have a slightly thicker hose, it should just plug right into here. You can glue it on, tape it on. And this whole unit here threads off the end on both sides. So your hose is kind of like quick connect to this piece. On this particular hose, uh, this is like E-O-L-O -O ducting hose, whatever that is and it actually threads into here. So there's a little thread inside here and you can thread it in and then this slots beautifully onto that. And then like I was saying, you can take this piece and we just thread it off. There it is. So this would basically be permanently connected to the end of your hose. You'd have the, the ring on the hose there and it just slots onto here, nice and smooth inside and you just slip this ring on, tighten it into place, you're good to go. So in order to demonstrate kind of what this thing is and why it works, I have this beautiful little cutout right here. So <laughs> basically you've got a inner core, which is the red part. The white pieces in the end are just my quick connects for your hose. So your hose can slip on here. Um, just to quickly touch on this, this suction nozzle, which will be part of a, a future video, this thing prints incredible, by the way, with no supports. So I'm excited to show you guys more about this. But this sits inside the hose like that. Now, so long as the direction of flow is in the nozzle where there's a bit of a restrictor, so you don't get big rocks that plug up your hose. And then as it hits the hose, it gets bigger. Like the inside of the hose is bigger than the inside of this. And that's great. But in this direction, rocks can go and hit that lip right here and maybe get flipped up and plugged up. So that's why the inside diameter of this tube is actually the same as the inside diameter as the hose. So it just goes straight through as opposed to having a little piece like this that has to plug into the hose at each end that can cause you some trouble. So I guess you call this an oversized suction jet. Set that down there. So the white pieces, that's just the hose part. And the, the key here is the blue part and the red part. So this here, You'll notice this is an inch and a half inlet. That's where your pressure goes in on here. It's a one and an eighth inch inlet, just depending on your pump that you're using that can thread on. So there's different pieces included. And then this blue area, I'm just going to pop this apart real quick. Sometimes that goes smoother. Uh, sometimes it's a little jiggly, but the inside of the blue part, this basically just turns into a manifold. It's, it's full of water and I've got some directional fins here to try to get the water as straight as possible. We basically want to take water, spray it in that direction to mix with the water in the hose. And that swirling effect is just wasted energy. We want it all to be linear. Then this inner core, so we'll just slot that in there. There's a little gap right at the bottom there. And that is where the water sprays out and it goes as a full 360 degree ring. That's gonna spray water down in this direction, creating a suction through the tube. So I wanna be clear about what this is and what this is not. 
it is a functional you know jet log for a gold dredge it is not some magical efficiency machine i swore earlier this year so this has been like a one year research about gold dredge project for me i thought this would be significantly more efficient than a suction nozzle or a single jet or a double jet turns out it's just water moving in that direction there's no magical voodoo here and this is about the same efficiency as any other type of jet you know within a margin of error what makes this good is the size of jet that you use. So I was using a Seaflow 3,700 gallon per hour bilge pump. And it turns out that you get a significant drop in your suction power if you have like a 10 millimeter jet compared to a 15 millimeter jet, which is just dialed for that pump. And if you go up to a 20 mil jet, significant drop off again. So there's a, a point of maximum efficiency. Now, I don't know what pump you might be using, some low pressure transfer pump, whatever it is. I recommend you use this with a, a gas pump of some kind and, and you just want something to connect to it to create suction and play around with whatever hose. This sort of fits onto everything, right? The, the key to this is what you can do is this part here rotates. So it's, it's nice and tight in there. It's got some click, so it sort of tries to stay put. You loosen this up until you get exactly the ideal flow. So for example, if you need a bigger jet to match your pump, you unscrew this. And what's happening there is the distance between this red piece and this blue piece opens up. So if I just keep unscrewing this, and I'll just unscrew it a bunch right here to demonstrate, the size of that gap has increased. And I can unscrew this even more. Now it's a really big gap. You'd never have a gap that big. The gap's actually really small. It's, it's all done and adjusted right up tight right there but it basically allows you to adjust the gap and adjust the pressure um, based on what works best for your pump so that is the advantage to this the disadvantage it's a very narrow gap if you were to suck some little sand or something up your intake it could plug this gap up however lucky you all you would need to do is unscrew this a little bit until that gap gets big enough to clear everything out or you can unscrew the entire thing and i'm just gonna take this apart here to demonstrate it's a long thread so it's got lots of adjustability this whole core comes out you can clean the whole thing out there's no like screws or bolts or tools required to do that out in the field which i think is a, a pretty nice feature let's give you a quick close-up of this i'm not sure how well this is going to show up on camera but this goes into this like so and then that screws together and course this guy here just gonna give you a good demonstration of what we have going on so your 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 sluice box is over on this side here that's where your pump would be pumping water in this direction so there's no kinks in the pipe fills this it's a real nice smooth transition into this little ring you notice it's a little bigger on this side narrower on that side just nice efficient bread of water there and then it comes out right between this red and this blue. There's a ring. So coming in from this end, that ring there all the way around. And if I can just pop that open a little bit. Yeah, focus. Now that ring's a little bit bigger. So basically as you unscrew this, the red part moves that way, opens this ring, and that is your adjustability. So, just to be clear, this is not more efficient than a traditional jet, but it might be if your jet is totally mix, mismatched to your pump. So this allows you to adjust it specifically to the pump you're using. Um, the primary thing that I really like about this design, the whole thing, is it's always fascinated me how these things actually work. It's like, what's the 360 ring jet? How does this thing actually work? I've been thinking about these things for years and they're just really cool. Um, <laughs> as like an eductor to move water with water, like nothing's cooler than a, a 360 infinity jet, ring jet, couple jet, whatever you want to call it. These things are really cool. So I wanted to make one and I made one, it's adjustable. And of course I made it so that you can print it out as a functional, you could actually hook up a pump to this thing, stick some hoses to the end, tape them on. These will allow you to disconnect your hose from each end and use this to move gold and stick the end of your hose into a sluice box and there you've created a bit of a dredge if you have a 3d printer you can print this thing out and use it 
or you can pick whatever colors you want and you can print out a little desktop display item like this where you actually get to see the inside show your friends and family show your kids this is how an infinity jet works kind of a cool project to learn from like oh water goes in here it sprays in that direction like you can adjust everything i did this in different colors to make it show up on camera nicely and uh personally i've just left this on my desk and i just like to stare at it so pretty cool option to have lying around um, as far as how you can get these so there's two options for me one is I only sell a physical product, meaning this intellectual property of mine. I don't want it to get out and get pirated and sold and whatever. Basically, I just sell you a physical product and I have to ship it to you and mail it to you. Um, thought about it. The other option is I send you a file and you print it yourself, which I think probably makes the most sense for something like this because while this is really cool, personally, the dredge I'm going with, I'm going with a traditional suction nozzle because if I know exactly the specs of my pump and I can do the right tests, I can create the same suction as this, but without that clog up issue and just a little bit of a simpler design. So I'm not too concerned about that. So I wanna put the file out there. You can download the file for this. You get the whole thing. You get the production usable version. You get the cutout version. You can choose to use whatever level of infill you want. I printed this 100% solid plastic out of ABS pretty much bomb proof um surprisingly bomb proof 3d printed stuff i thought was kind of a bit of a toy this is serious this is like look at your abs pipe fittings you'd find at a hardware store and it's just as strong as that it's pretty pretty solid for a plastic thing right um so yeah basically you can download this thing it'll be on my website the price will be on the website i think at this time i don't know I, I may adjust the price, so I'm just going to leave that on the website so you can see what it is for this file. And then you can download and use it. The only issue with that is that people who don't have a 3D printer and have no interest in getting a 3D printer can't get a hold of this. So for now, I'm just going to say, please be patient. I'm sort of doing this Australia thing. I'm going to try to get this high banker factory up and running back in Calgary and uh, to set up a print farm where I can actually print these, put them in a box and ship them out to you. That won't be until sometime in 2025, hopefully early 2025, but uh, just be patient on that. And at some point there should be a physical product for sale as well. But for now, it's a digital file. You can download this, you can print it out, you can play with it, go have fun. Tell your friends, uh, <laughs> the more of these I can sell, the more I can like justify the amount of time and effort that I put into actually designing this sort of thing. Uh, I think it's really cool, but it would also be awesome if you know, one or two people actually purchased one of these from me. I think that'd be a nice little cherry on top. Uh, that's it for the product for sale in this video. This is what's coming up next. I want to go into all the juicy details, but essentially it's a subsurface gold dredge. So the thing floats with pop bottles <laughs> and uh, kind of ridiculous. The number of different caps for pop bottles turns out and this is way more information than you ever wanted to know about one of these things. There are three different international standards bodies for pop bottle lids, and they're not even standards. They're like suggestions because every pop bottle comes with its own lid. So you don't need like a absolute standard, but I believe uh, <laughs> a pop bottle is a PCO 1881. Is it? I might correct that. Um, a smart water bottle, which is a, a common thing people use, you know, hiking and stuff in North America, is a SC415. And all of these different threads, uh, they're like 28 millimeter threads, but they're very slightly different. And so you kind of need to make sure that the thread you make is loose enough that it can fit a variety of different pop bottles. And then it's just that the head that locks in. So these are, in fact, watertight. And all it is, is a pop bottle. This is a little 300 milliliter Sprite and it screws into this, which is all glued and connected. And you just snug that up. And now it is a float for your gold dredge. This doesn't need to float a lot of weight because the whole thing sits like right at the surface of the water. So it provides its own buoyancy. It is very strong, which is pretty cool. This wasn't supposed to be a video about this. I'm going into way too much detail, but uh, real quick, these pieces, they, they won't come out. And there's these little retention rings, so you pull a ring apart, and now you can pop the riffle tray out, pull the back off, and 
this riffle tray is locked in place, won't go anywhere, but we're just gonna pull this apart so we can demonstrate. Drop riffle, 3D printed, clips into place, and this actually has miner's moss with, instead of expanded metal, custom 3D printed riffles, which I think would actually outperform expanded metal. Um, so a couple options for the base. This is translucent PETG, which should print without an enclosure. This is all just printed in ABS. And uh, to go with that, a nozzle. So whether you want to go with the subsurface dredge or not, this nozzle is awesome. Um, I'll go into more details in a future video, but it prints with zero supports. So just the, the shape and design of everything, really easy to print this thing and amazing suction. And of course, threadable tips. So I've got different like lengths of suction, like, you know, getting into crevices and different types of tips and you can just screw them on and off. This is a wear item. You're going to be scratching up against rocks and gravel. This is going to wear out. You don't want to have to keep reprinting your whole nozzle. So pretty, uh, pretty awesome little setup. I'm very happy with everything here. So more details on the rest in the next video. If you want a infinity jet slash cutout, it's going to be one file. It includes both of these, everything you need to go show your friends or mine some gold. Uh, utmostoutdoors.com. Send me your money. Till next time, cheers everyone and thank you for watching.